Hi, I'm Sarah. Um, we're coming to you from the Loft Makerspace at Centennial Park Library. Um, we're part of the Pasco County Library System. Uh, today I'm going to be talking to you about how to mix acrylic paint. I'll be showing you one acrylic paint method, which is the wet on wet technique for blending. So there's more than one color wheel, um, something that not a lot of people realize. The traditional color wheel that we're often taught in schools is the red, blue, yellow color wheel. That's the one that was discovered by Sir Isaac Newton like more than a century ago. So we'll start with that one and then I'll show you one that might be better for other purposes. So I have a old t-shirt here for a rag instead of using paper towels. Um, I've got my palette. I've got some red paint. Uh, this is apple red. I'm going to pour a little bit of that into one of my palette spaces. Um, red, yellow, and blue are considered primary colors on the traditional color wheel. So primary meaning you can't mix them. Um. So. so I have, have to use them straight out of the tube. And yellow. I'm going to add a little bit of yellow to my right over there. And I'll do a little bit of yellow over here for the... Okay, so I'm going to start with my primary colors. So you can do this along with me at home or if you're in the makerspace uh, at one of our open loft times um, and using our materials, you can go ahead and do that. I'm using a reclaimed canvas, a recycled canvas that somebody donated to our free art closet. Um, and I just paint it over with white um, acrylic paint so to prime it. So we're going to make we're going to make a color spectrum wheel. So first we're going to make just the we're just going to do stripes. We're not going to worry about making pretty wedges or anything. So I'm going to make a blue stripe, and then I'm going to lay my brush down. Then I'm going to make a, a yellow stripe over here. and lay my brush down and then I'm going to make a red stripe for my primary colors. Okay, so that was easy. There's no mixing involved. Now let's um, blend some of our secondary colors. So if we mix, if we mix red and yellow together, that's going to give us orange. And this, you see, I added too much red so I'm going to go over here. So this is a very red orange. I'm going to go over here, use some of my yellow and mix that in to get a more yellow orange. And then I'm going to go over here and mix into the yellow to get a very yellow orange. So I'm going to take this color over to my canvas over here and we'll start with the more yellow orange. I'll place it next to my yellow. I'm going to need a little bit more yellow here. Pure yellow. Okay. I'm going to place it next to my yellow over here and then I'm going to use the wet yellow and orange, no, sorry, the yellow orange paint on the canvas and some pure yellow paint on my brush and I'm just going to blend the two together on my canvas for the wet on wet technique. I might have to clean my brush in between I'm using my old rag to clean my brush um, because I might have too much red on that brush. So just creating a nice smooth gradient. So like we already saw, um, if I add more red to the orange, then I get a very red orange color. Um, and so I go more towards the red side. So if I mix that in there, I can clean my brush a little bit and use some pure red on my brush and kind of blend the two together. 
Beautiful. I'm going to use my in the middle orange and put it in between those two and just blend it out while it's still wet onto the others. And I'm not going to worry about this mess over here. Okay, so that is one third of my color wheel filled in. So I'm going to um, put this brush in my brush wash over here. And then I'm going to go towards my towards my yellow here. So I'm going to put some more yellow over here. And now let's see, we're going towards the blue. So let's see what, I ha what happens if I put a little bit of blue in with some of my yellow. So just the smallest amount of blue in with my yellow and I get a green. I'm going to put this green over here and then I'm going to use some pure yellow to blend the two together. Oops. So blue is a much stronger color than yellow so it's going to overpower it unless you have enough yellow in the mix. So. I'm adding more yellow to my mix and I'm using pure yellow right now just to blend those two together because otherwise if I keep going with my green on my brush towards the yellow I'm just gonna blot that yellow out completely so some pure yellow on my brush and there I've, I've created a nice gradient so now I've got this green color that's my medium green I'm gonna add a little bit more blue to the color and see what happens. So this is, here I'm mixing just a little bit of the color I'm trying to blend to in with the color that I already have. Um, use some yellow there. And then on the canvas I blend the two together. I, you saw I added a little bit of yellow there because I had just too strong of a green on there. Okay, and now I'm going to add a little bit more blue to this mix until I'm almost, this is like a turquoise color, I'm almost back to blue now. If I can dry my brush off, I can blend this together a little bit easier. And then I'm going to go back to my pure blue and I'm going to blend these two colors together. And there we go. So since we're exploring color, I'm not really m much of one for um, for making lines and measuring up wedges. Okay, so I'm going to go back to my blue. Um, we're going to put a little bit of wet paint on that blue. And we're going to start mixing towards red. So here I've got some red and blue. Here I've got some red and blue together in the same spot. I'm going to mix them together and I'm going to get a sort of purple. And you'll see in a little bit that to get a nicer purple, I mean this is a pretty purple, but uh, if you want to get a nicer purple, it's always good to add a little bit of white. I'll do that in a bit to show you. Um, and it's also a little bit, you're going to get a brighter purple if you mix um, magenta and cyan, which we'll talk about in a second. I'm going to put my purple here in the middle for my tertiary color and then I'm going to blend out towards my blue by adding a little bit of blue to my purple and going towards the blue. I'm just going to add a little bit more blue and Okay, so now see how I've overpowered my purple here a little bit with too much blue, so I'm just going to go back, get some more purple, and just blend back into purple, drying out my brush a little bit. The wonderful thing about acrylics is it's so forgiving. You can just cover up whatever you made a mistake uh, anytime you make a mistake. Okay, so I'm going to add a little bit of red to my purple here. Um, blend that in between plum color. And blend into my purple 
add a little bit more red. And dry my brush off. Add a little bit more. I've got pure red on the brush now with the little bit of purple paint I still had on there. I'm just going to blend that color up into my purple, letting it blend on the canvas, cleaning off my brush. And using a t-shirt um, to clean your brushes is a great way to be environmentally conscious, to save money and paper towels, and also just to reuse your old rags for something practical. Cotton t-shirts work the best because they're very absorbent. Okay, and then I'm going to take some pure red just to blend these two colors together over here. And that's my color wheel, color spectrum with the traditional colors. Now the one question I get asked a lot is how do you make black and white? The answer is you don't. Black and white are not colors. <laughs> or rather, white is all of the colors um, in the visible spectrum if you jam them together as pure light. Black is the absence of all light and all color. So people will often tell you that you can get um, black by mixing primer, uh, complementary colors. So what are complementary colors? If I look at this anywhere on the spectrum and I put my brush across it in a straight line, the two colors that are opposite one another, the blue and the orange, those are complementary colors. If I move it, purple and orange, or sorry, purple and yellow will be complementary colors. If I move it, red and green, those are complementary colors. So if I mix any of the complementary colors together, I'm going to get brown, but don't take my word for it. Let's see. So I'm going to take some yellow. I'm going to mix it in with my purple. There's not a lot. I'm going to mix it in with this purple here. And lo and behold, I wind up with brown. So connect the two colors that I just mixed together. And that's a brown. It's a good medium brown. Um, and let's see what happens if I clean this brush off. And then then I um, mix together a little bit. Let's do green and red. So I've got my red over here. I've got some green over here. I'm going to take the red and bring it over to the green. Mix them together. Uh, maybe I added a little bit too much red. Let's add a little bit more blue. And I'm just going to put a touch more yellow in there because now I added too much of the two strong colors. Okay, so a touch more yellow. And oh, look, look at that. I have brown again. Red and green makes brown. And they're going to make slightly different browns. If you want a slightly more red brown, then just add a little less green. Uh, if you want a slightly more green brown, like a khaki, then just add less red. So there's a, a brown. And let's see, what, what, what do we left? Blue and orange. So we're going to mix blue and orange together. So take some orange from over here, put it with the blue. And as predicted, well, like we can predict, the blue is a stronger color, so it overpowers the orange. I'm actually just going to take some of this orange over here. And I'm actually just going to add the blue to this orange, I think, because I already have enough blue on my brush to already overpower all of this orange. So I wind up with a pretty, you can see it's a dark bluish brown but it's brown nonetheless. Um, some people will call this gray, but there we go, we wound up with. And then if I added a little bit more blue to my brown, I get a bluer brown. If I added a little bit more green to my brown, I'll get a greener brown. Add a little more yellow, wind up with something a little bit more on the yellow side, more like a beige. Um, and add a little orange to get a warm, bright brown. 
And then I can add some purple to get a moody dark brown and a little bit of red to get a rusty brown. There we go. So we've got brown in the middle. Now, some of the tricks I wanted to show you guys is if I take a purple, I'm going to have to, to I'll, I'll go in this spot over here where I've already got some purple mix and I'm going to actually clean my brush and I'm going to add just the smallest smidgen of red because it's not very purple. Kind of like ketchup, sometimes you just have to shake it and then use it. And then I'm also going to add the smallest dab of white. Just a drop. And now when I come back with my clean brush and I mix these colors together, I'm going to wind up with a much brighter purple than what I had before. So you see that color comes out a lot brighter. Um, I can add a little bit more blue. I think I overdid it with that red. And I get a very bright purple over there. Okay, so that is the red, blue, yellow traditional color wheel. Let's move on to another one. So in this color wheel, our primaries are cyan, magenta, and yellow. So we're not, our primary colors here is not going to be red, blue, and yellow. It's going to be magenta instead of red, cyan instead of blue, and yellow stays yellow. This is actually the way that printers make color. Most printers, at least. I'm going to squeeze out a little bit of magenta and just a drop over there and a drop over there. I'm going to squeeze out a little bit of yellow with just a drop over here and a drop over here. And as I know, my yellow is not the strongest color, so I'm going to probably need a little bit more. This color wheel is useful if you're somebody who likes to work with bright colors, because it's going to wind up giving you much brighter um, colors um, when they're mixed together. I'm going to start with magenta over here on the bottom left. I'm just going to make a nice big magenta wedge. Like I said, this is usually a little bit more on the purple side, but this will have to do today. Okay, And clean my brush off. And then we'll go over and we'll do the yellow wedge over here. Clean my brush off. And the blue, or sorry, not blue. This is not blue. The cyan wedge at the top. There's actually a really fun YouTube video um, where this lady rants about this color wheel. Uh, if you want to check out the link, I'll put it for you below. So let's mix some blue and cyan and see what happens. And look at that. We get this really bright lime green to go between the two colors. If I take a little bit more cyan, I blend it towards the cyan side. Um, and then if I clean that off. And I take a little bit more of the yellow. I blend it out towards the yellow side and I get this bright this is this is a truly lime green and if I take some yellow on my brush I can actually oh I want to start with pure yellow so I clean my brush completely remember we said that the yellow is the weakest color so it's easy to overpower it I'm going to take some pure yellow on my brush Start from the yellow and then work my way into the green. 
and clean it off over here. And then I'm going to do the same with the, the cyan. I'm going to clean off my brush, take pure cyan and work it into the green. Oops, there we go. Messed that one up. Okay. Just cover it up because that's the beautiful one, beautiful thing about acrylics. It's the most forgiving medium. Okay. So I'm done with that side of the color wheel. Give the brush a good wash. By the way, I had never encountered a brush washer in my life until I came to America. And I was like, what is a brush washer? What do you mean you don't just put them under the tap and run water over them? Squeeze them with your fingers. But Okay, so yellow, I'm going to put some yellow over here. And then I'm going to mix in a little bit of magenta. And look at that bright, bright orange color that I get. I'm going to put that in the middle. So if you're somebody who likes bright colors, my sister loves bright colors. She's, a, she's an artist that works with a lot of bold colors, and that's some, some, somewhere we differ a little bit. Um, so she loves working with the cyan magenta yellow color wheel. I tend to prefer earth tones, so I like the slightly duller colors you get with the traditional color wheel. I'm going to take a little bit of yellow here, pure yellow, and start over here to blend into the orange. Let's clean this off. So we still sort of have the same colors. If you look here, that looks very similar to red. It's just slightly brighter. So, and they're slightly, they're placed a little bit different on the color wheel, on this color wheel, I should say. Okay, so I'm going to give this brush a clean, and then we'll start from the magenta. We'll wet that magenta down, and then we'll add a little bit of cyan. And look at that, isn't that the, if that's not the brightest purple, that you can mix with paint, and I don't know what would be. So there's my purple. And if I'm mixing a little bit more cyan, it becomes a little bit darker, even. And you get this beautiful um, ultraviolet color almost. And I'm just going to clean off my brush. And then I'm actually just going to use this slightly damp, clean brush to just blend those colors together, which is another method that you can use to blend if you have wet enough colors next to each other and they're about um, the same strength. You don't have that much of a conflict between magenta and cyan. They're sort of equally powerful as far as mixing goes. Um, so, blend them together. This is really better when there's an underlayer, this, this style of mixing, and when you're trying to emphasize the brush strokes, because if you look, you can see uh, I'm actually taking a little bit of paint off when I'm mixing this way and revealing some of the white canvas underneath. So. If you're trying to emphasize your brush strokes and you have um, a layer of paint beneath the one that you're currently doing that's already dried, this is going to give you better results. And I definitely don't want to muddy up this orange by mixing any of the purple in there. So I'm just going to go brighten up this magenta over here. I want to keep my brush very clean as I go. Okay, and now, well, can you still get brown in the middle is what I want to know. So let's see. Let's find out. So if I take magenta, the opposite one is green. So I'm going to mix magenta and green together. So now you can see that's very green. You want to add a little bit more magenta. Now that's too much magenta. Now it's too magenta. So let's go over here to the green palette. 
mix in there. And there you go. So you still get a brown, but it's much lighter. It's like a pastel brown almost um, than what you get with the traditional cutter wheel. So if you like dark, moody cutters, the traditional cutter wheel is a really good way to go. If you like bright, happy cutters, then magenta, yellow, and cyan is your friend. I'm going to take a little bit of cyan here, mix it in with the orange. That might be a little bit too much. I'm going to take a little bit of yellow, add it back in. I'm going to take a little bit of magenta and add it back in. Sometimes you just have to play with the balance until you get it right. Now we're back too much towards too much blue. Add a little bit of yellow. Now it's too green. Add a little bit of magenta. Okay, and that there we've got another brown, and it's back to that pastel brown. So we had um, orange and cyan together. Gives you that pastel brown again. Okay, and let's see what happens if we mix. We did green and magenta, we did blue and orange, let's do um, this purple and yellow. So I'm going to take, I'm going to just use this yellow, I'm going to take a little bit of this purple, and we know that the purple is stronger than the yellow, so we're not going to put in too much, but I still wind up with a very yellow color, so I'm going to go grab a little bit more purple, bring it in, and it's still very yellow. So maybe a little bit more. In fact, I'm going to mix over here in the purple tray with what's on my brush. And I think I did it too much yellow. I'm going to add a little bit of magenta, a little bit of blue, because I know those together make purple. Uh, a little bit more magenta. And we're back to this pastel brown, although this time it's a little bit on the green side. But there you go. Um, your complementary colors still make brown. Um, and now one more thing before I finish up. And that for that I have to mix a little bit more purple again. So I already have some blue in here. Or sorry, I keep calling it blue. It's not blue. Cyan. <laughs> See, I'm, I'm indoctrinated by the grade school system myself. <laughs> um, so I'm going to add a, ta a touch of um, magenta to this. Mix the two together and we get that luminous purple color again. Bring some of that over here because I have too much of it now and I don't want to waste paint. If you wind up with a giant blob of a color you don't want, take some over to another spot and mix it over there with less paint. Um, it's going to save you a lot of paint in the long run. So, so I get this nice luminous purple. which is not a real color. Um, if you watch the other video, you'll know what, I know what I mean. And then if I add just the smallest drop of white to that, just look at that. You're going to wind up with this bright, bright purple. And there you go. So that's the two color wheels um, I want to show you today. Uh, if you have any questions, drop them in the comments and maybe we'll make another video in the future for you to answer those. I hope this has been helpful and enjoy painting. Thanks for watching.